Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to take a look at another one of my uh, bad purchasing decisions. Um, so this is a Rampage 6 Apex that I bought as four parts not working from eBay for 36 quid, which I would consider a pretty good deal. It's a bit dusty, the socket is in perfect condition, and the seller didn't really describe any specific issues with it because it was a job lot board. Um, so they were just like, yeah, board looks healthy, but no worky worky i doesn't uh, seller didn't have a cpu to test the board with and yeah so you know socket you can't really see like even from a distance if there's a bent pin you'll see that there's like a difference in the way the light reflects off of the pins and you'll notice that but yeah we can see that there's there's no bent pins here also i just woke up so um like th this getting delivered woke me up so <laughs> basically if i'm a little bit all over the place that's because this literally just showed up now uh, I don't believe this board will turn on even if we don't, don't have a CPU in it. I, like, so when I first got the board, I was immediately like, oh, will I pull my 7940X out of my X299 Dark and stick it in this board? Um, which I'm really glad I didn't do that because <laughs> one of the biggest problems with dead motherboards is if you stick a working CPU into them, depending on the defect that the motherboard has, uh, they're going to kill the CPU. And this is almost certainly one of those boards that's going to kill a CPU. So we're first going to just plug in the 24 pin. And see if we can get this to turn on. Okay, so it does not try to turn on without a CPU installed, which uh, that's, that's actually kind of very disappointing for me. Um, if we plug in an 8 pin. like this, Yeah, that is actually really super annoying. Yeah, it will not turn on if we don't put a CPU in it. There's no way I'm putting a CPU in this, though, because I know for a fact that this is going to kill any chip that you put in it. Or at least there's a very, very high probability it's going to kill every single chip you put in it. Because... Where's my multimeter? Right. Here's the multimeter. I'm going to turn off the PSU. And we're going to do some probing. So, let's get those out of the way. There's our multimeter, and let's go for one of the eight pins. So that is a five, mil five ohm resistance in that eight pin power connector. That is not okay for an eight pin power connector. If you measure from the ground to the 12 volts on an eight pin power connector, you should be expecting something in the range of like kilo ohms to hundreds of kilo ohms, not five ohms. There's a short circuit here, um, which doesn't really surprise me because as cool a motherboard as this is, and as much, and you know, I really wanted one of them because these these uh, these are pretty cool boards. Like I love the X Apex series boards. Um, this has a really really underpowered VRM for X299. This is an eight phase, um, which is like <laughs> super not okay. Because it's on 60 amp power stages, so the max current handling capacity of this VRM is 480 amps. I mean, that's the absolute limit of the power stages. While putting out 480 amps, if I'm not mistaken, the VRM spits out something like 100-ish watts of heat. So it gets... Yeah, and that's... Like, yeah. So basically, this is not okay. For X299, I would say, like, you know, bare minimum, you'd want, like, a 10-phase... <laughs> But really, I would say anything like 12 phases or more, and this uh, or 12 power stages or more if you're going to put your power stages in parallel. But this right here is very, very not okay. If we measure from the output of the VRM, so we're just going to measure from the tab of this inductor over here to, and I forgot you guys need to see this, so to the 8 pin. Yeah, that's, uh, that's... That's very, very, very not good. I should not be seeing a short circuit between the output of the VRM and either side of the 8-pin. I can't actually remember which side of the 8-pin power connector is 12 volts. Doesn't really matter because, uh, like, either our output is shorted to ground, which is bad, or our 12 volts is shorted to the output, which is what I think this is, um... And that's even worse, because you put a CPU in this, depending on how fast your power supply is, uh, you're going to shove 12 volts into the CPU. Um, your CPU is going to die. Uh, there's there's no, like, th there's no, like, oh, your, your CPU, well, it won't, well, 
It's not entirely true, but it's pretty much like, it's kind of like the GPUs that I get with blown up power stages. Theoretically, if you keep power cycling a GPU with a blown up power stage, eventually it'll kill the GPU core, sometimes instantly. Uh, same goes for a motherboard with a blown, uh, blown VRM like this, where, uh, yeah, this, this is just super, super shorted out. So I guess we'll just take off the heat sinks and see, see what we can see. Cause I don't actually think we're going to see like a straight up dead power stage. So this is going to be super annoying to repair. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder all the inductors cause they're easier to pull off. Like, uh, technically, there's a short finding method where you feed current into the board, but I don't have a properly, like, cur like I don't have a proper current-limited power supply. Um, and I don't really feel like hooking this up to an e-power, because, uh, to, to ta like, the thing is, if you, if you feed it with just, like, one volt, a five, yeah, actually, one volt into a five-ohm short, that's not gonna really show up very quickly. So, yeah, the thing is, I just prefer pulling inductors. Like, the thing is, inductors are really, really easy to remove. So, and then put back, well, the put back on part is debatable, but <laughs> remove is easy. Um, so yeah, we don't see any, okay, like the good news is I can't see any like board level damage. So like we're not seeing PC holes in the PCB or anything, which is what I was hoping for. Because if there was holes in the PCB, then that would be very, very annoying to deal with. And uh, hopefully I have enough, like... Come on. Okay, well, that's... Let's grab this. Oh, man, this is one of those really... Yay! Hooray for thermal pads that just disintegrate when you... So the thing is, like, all of the phases are in parallel, so, the, like, the whole VRM looks shorted at this point, so... You can't really... Like, I'd be hoping that we see, like, a bubble on one of the power stages or something to indicate that it's not healthy, but... You know, I I have low expectations because a lot of the time dead power stages don't look very dead. Well, yeah, no, all of these look like fine. Well, that sucks. Also, I'm not sure where I'm going to source another 3555. Because, like, I would actually like to repair this board where I'm not, like, running it with one phase missing. Because the thing is, if you run it with one phase missing, it's like, like, you're just making the... Like, the original problem of this VRM is, like, it's not big enough. And then it's like, if you repair it by removing one of the dead phases and then keep running it as a seven phase, it's like, well, now it's even smaller. So, the problem is worse. <laughs> um, which, the thing is, is I don't really necessarily plan to use this board for benching, like, the big X299 CPUs. Like, I wouldn't put an 18 core in this, just because this is not okay for an 18 core. But, well, if I was running a 7740X, honestly, like, even half the VRM would be fine. Well, yeah, a 7740X, even with half the VRM, it should be fine. So if I, like, basically, if I only used it at a, as a KB, like, X board, um, then it's okay. But, yeah, like, <laughs> that kind of defeats the purpose of a, of a X299 board like this, in my opinion. Yeah, but none of those power stages looks shorted, which is super annoying. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you this so that you could see, like, why you don't, like, don't randomly, if you buy a dead board off of eBay, don't randomly stick a CPU into it hoping it'll turn on. Because if you buy a board like this right here, where the output, like, the output of the VRM seems to be, or actually is almost certainly shorted to the 8-pin eight uh, eight power connectors, like, you are going to blow up your CPU. Actually... Um, I've just got a really bad idea. 
we're gonna check the OCP on my PSU. Like, I, I have a Corsair HX 1200. Uh, I trust it not to do anything. Is it in multi-rail mode? Yes, it's in multi-rail mode. So, the reason why I'm checking that it's in multi-rail mode is that in multi-rail mode, uh, the OCP should trip faster. So, hopefully we don't get any, um, fire. Wait, is it still on? Oh, I think I turned it off. Yeah, I turned it off. Yep. Okay, that turned it on. So, and if we plug it into one of the eight pins, these are, both of these connectors are in parallel. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you plug in. And... I'm kind of nervous about this. Oh, well, that tells us which power stage exploded, I guess. <laughs> So, yeah, that right there is why you shouldn't put a CPU into a dead board. Oh my god, that scared me. <laughs> I was really not expecting it to blow up like that. Well, at this point, I think we should be able to tell what blew up. Or at least I'm hoping I can. Oh man, that smells really bad. How did it manage to not put a dent in any of the power stages. Like, they still all look relatively okay. They don't smell okay. Oh, it blew one of the moss... Oh, I know what it blew up. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> It didn't blow the power stages because it blew out one of the output capacitors. This guy over here. Um, if you over like if you overvolt a polymer capacitor significantly, yeah, it's gonna blow the snot out of it. Um, okay, so actually, we should probably like at this point, it's like I should also probably replace the entire output filter because those caps have been overloaded. Well, at this point, I'd say at least twice because it would have been overloaded originally when the previous when it died on to, on the previous owner, and I just overloaded it again. Um, so that's no good, um, man. But stupid power stages! <laughs> like I was hoping, like since we got the smoke, I was like, oh, maybe it got the power stages. No, it got the freaking capacitor of all things. Um, Like, yeah, so, actually, I guess I could just, like, use a slightly modified 8-pin power connector to feed current into it and see which power stage get hot, like, gets hot and then, then find the short circuit that way. Oh, man, that sca scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I was really not expecting such a massive explosion from it. Not the first time I've had a cap explode because of uh, too much voltage on it, but... Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, there. Like, I don't think that would have necessarily happened if you had the board plugged in. Also, I just want to check my power supply still works. Because I've actually had a... Like, it, technically speaking, something like this shouldn't kill your power supply because you have, a, like, your, you know, you have overcurrent protection. And it's supposed to prevent that from, from killing PSUs. And also from starting fires, because, you know, if the entire, if 1200 watts of, like, this is a 1200 watt power supply, but it's on multi-rail in, which I think is 40 amps per rail. So in multi-rail, if you put 480 watts of power into the short circuit over here, that's a fire hazard. Like, I mean, we got the mini explosion of the capacitor, but that's not like, like 480 watts into a short circuit is, is a bad idea. Um, yeah, power supply still turns on, so PSU seems fine. Which is good. Like, the thing is, I've actually had, like, a Seasonic-built power supply where after I tripped OCP on it, I think three or four times in a row, it just stopped turning on completely. So, I, it's just, like, one of the concerns where it's like, yeah, it's not supposed to kill the power supply. Um, but I've had that happen. So, um, yeah, and I'm not, like, bashing Seasonic. Um, it's just, yeah, that's one, like, the... 
That, that's one example, like, that's the one example I can think of where I've had a PSU where, and it wasn't even, like, a really bad short circuit like this. It was just, like, water on a motherboard that was causing it to trip up. And, uh, because I was benching on LN2 and the insulation wasn't perfect, and so it would just shut down on me. Um, and then it just stopped booting eventually, but, yeah. Well, goodbye capacitor, I guess, and I need to figure out which power stage on this is blown. Actually, I wonder... There's a really interesting scorch mark on the PCB. But yeah, dead motherboards are very, very, very sketchy <laughs> to try power on. Okay, there, that's it for the video. That is the, I think, first explosion I've actually caught on camera for AHOC, so progress. <laughs> like, I'm going to uplo upload the video just because we got an explosion, even though that was really dumb. Like, honestly, that was really dumb of me to power it on like that, but... Like, I suspected, like, I was hoping the OCP would trip before anything happened, but apparently not. It, it did manage to blow. So, yeah. Um, there, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon, which uh, allows me to buy sketchy motherboards like this off of eBay. Um, there's a link to it down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store, where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual... Uh, YouTuber merch, um, which uh, achieves the same, th like, the point of that is the same as the point of the Patreon, allows me to buy sketchy mo motherboards off of eBay, as well as test equipment. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's it. Let's, let's turn this video off. Man, <laughs> that really scared me, though, that, that cap going. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I'll get this fixed. I, like, it shouldn't be too hard to... Like, the biggest problem I can see is I don't think I have any spare 3555s lying around, as in I don't have these power stages on some random board that I could steal them off of. And also, I just said I'm finishing the video, so I, I should just stop the video, so yeah. Uh, hopefully, you'll see, see this board back up and running eventually, because it is a really, like, this is a really interesting motherboard, in my opinion. Like, it's an Apex board. They're all very... Well, no, the Apex 10 is basically an Apex 9, so that one doesn't count, but... All the other Apex is very interesting. So, yeah, I, I'm a, like, I really hope I get this working again. Anyway, um, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Goodbye.